Every episode of The Gage is brought to you by Bill Fick Ford and the WCRA. Guys, Bill Fick Ford is the number one Super Duty dealer in the country for the fourth year in a row. You guys have heard me rant and rave about Bill Fick Ford for the absolute best buying experience in the car industry, truck industry. Bill Fick Ford's the place to go. I bet you remember the old ad where I said I was getting a new Super Duty. Well, here's the keys for that. Bill Fick Ford delivers, guys. Noble discounts, noble interest rates, the best buying experience you can get. And if you are not local to Huntsville or the Houston area, he'll deliver it to you just like he did to me. Bill Fick Ford. Rodeo Corpus Christi has nearly tripled its added prize money from 2019 and will be one of the largest payout rodeos this summer. That's $545,000 with no entry fees. Rodeo Corpus Christi will be the first stop of WCRA's Triple Crown of Rodeo. The only way to qualify for the Rodeo Corpus Christi is by nominating your rides and runs with the WCRA. You can win $1 million by nominating your rides and runs and earning points with the WCRA. Through the Triple Crown of Rodeo, the WCRA will award this $1 million cash prize to any one athlete or collective of athletes who win first place at any three consecutive WCRA major rodeos. A common misconception with the WCRA is that it is only for the pros. That's the farthest thing from the truth. It's designed for the underdogs to have their fair chance if you feel like you have the ability to compete against the best in the world. But maybe you don't feel like it. Maybe you can't afford to go down the road for a full year. Maybe you got a job. Well, the WCRA is made for you. The WCRA has awarded more than $8.5 million to rodeo athletes in just a couple of years. To learn more, visit WCRARodeo.com and learn how you can earn a spot at Rodeo Corpus Christi and possibly be Rodeo's next millionaire. What sets Resist All apart is the legacy of the cowboys who wear the brand. These traditions are passed down from fathers to sons, from heroes to future champions. Since 1927, Resist All has been handcrafting the finest American-made cowboy hats. Generation after generation, we live it. This is The Gage with host Chance Conradu. Are you freaking serious? It's Conrado. This is The Gage, and I am Chance Conrado. On this episode of the podcast, we have got JW and Leanne Hart. Uh, Leanne has a podcast of her own called Leanne Hart Ministries. JW is, a, you know, he's a PBR bull rider from back in the day, and uh, they are very interesting people and really amazing people, frankly. If you, uh, you know, if you follow her on social media, she's got a, a nice little social media following. She does a lot of really nice things, and and, and we kind of got hung up on the, the foster care thing that they do because I just found that to be truly fascinating and uh been on a little sabbatical took a little break from the gauge but we're back and uh yeah i thought this was a really good one to kind of get back to our normal routine and i would urge you to check out her on instagram check out her podcast because if i mean if you need a little bit of uplifting a little biblical truce she's a lady to give it to you so yeah tune in what did you do to your finger by the way one of those ticks a little bigger than you thought <laughs> Stuck it in the wrong end of a snapping turtle. Oh. Whatever. Usually that's pretty whatever. easy to avoid. Whatever. Don't <laughs> even. It was. Tell them what you did. I was bucking some calves yesterday and it got between the box and the buck and shooting a calf jumped in there and mashed the end of it off. So when you say the wrong. Hold on. I got to go back. The wrong. So there's a right end of a snapping turtle? <laughs> I'm just. I don't know. I was going to say. I mean, you don't got to tell me what you're into, but. <laughs> <laughs> Gets kinky around there. Oh, well, you know, you're picking ticks off one day, and the next yeah. day you're hanging out with the wrong end of a snapping turtle. I don't know what you guys are doing up there in Oklahoma. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, yesterday when he did that to his finger, uh, I knew he was serious when he calmly said, I've got to go to the hospital. Oh, it's it's one of those deals. Yeah, he had to get yeah it, some stitches. Yes. But and I, I had to make fun of it. Like needles. it was, <laughs> it was not cool. It got real hot in that hospital for a while. I made hot. sure we we FaceTimed uh -huh. because we stayed back to finish messing with the bulls and making sure they got turned out. And 
And uh, anyway, it was pretty, I, it's frustrating when you're FaceTime and you can't like, um, you can record, but it doesn't capture the sound. Yep. That would have been, that would have been like 100%. It was about 75% just seeing his expressions. That his wouldn't face. have went good on your timeline or whatever. Why? Miss Jesus, so you wouldn't have one of the cuss words that was coming. You weren't cussing. <laughs> you, were, you were cringing. You weren't cussing. <laughs> Miss Jesus? Yeah. Whatever. Well, that's not a bad title, really. No, it's not, it. but we we even each other out because I say the bad words. So you're she, not Mr. Jesus? It. Well, no. So I'm not Miss Jesus. Well, but you're Miss... Like goody two shoes, don't cuss, don't kiss, <laughs> don't that. <laughs> See, I told you, like, no go. I mean, she has a podcast called Lena Hart Ministries. So yeah, I mean, you kind of got to fit the part, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so she's. So he wants to know Jesus. where you fit in all this. Well, basically. I'm trying to figure this <laughs> wow. out because I'm starting to question a lot of your decision making. Lena. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing whatever he's doing with those turtles. He's got ticks crawling around on him, and <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, anybody that knows us knows that there's probably a little special place for me, uh, maybe in a separate room sometimes. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. In a straight jacket. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, See, this is we'll what I'm that. working with all the time. It's curriculum. I just call it curriculum. Padded room, straight jacket. How long have you guys been married? A little while. 15 years. 15? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did that? So now I'm really intrigued. I'm usually not one who gets too interested in people's relationships because I'm like that's between you and the turtles. But it's uh, <laughs> I'm real interested in kind of how that all. I mean, I know you were PBRing back in the day and doing that whole deal. You got a rookie of the year and a world championship under your belt. And I tell people that it's FarmersOnly.com just to hide the fact that she was a buckle bunny that landed me. I knew this was going to get evil. I knew it was going to oh, go all the way. No. I knew that this was going to get evil. This isn't Lena Hart Ministries. This is the gauge. It gets weird. <laughs> get off of your phone. Well, I'm, Seriously, I'm like, texting. put it away. He told business. you this happens everywhere. Like, it's put business. Your, I'm business It's man. a distraction. Quit. Well, you're messing with my business now. Yeah, you're come on, making, John. You're making Good. me feel unimportant. I was hey, thinking the same thing. Here. <laughs> I was I'm thinking. not here willingly. <laughs> I was promised. Hey, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, we're supposed to be here. Like, you know. Yeah. I'm questioning it now. Good grief. I was promised pay, so where's that? The Can pay? I get that first? He's, he's counting it on that later. Okay. He's counting on that later. Yeah, I'm yeah, just a like, volunteer. I showed up today. As long as you agreed to it, you heard her. <laughs> yeah. Good grief. Yeah, the oh, cross promotion. It's going to help her. Mm. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah, just quit. Just quit right now. <laughs> just quit. Lord. Well, hold on. We were getting into some good stuff. I was yeah. really interested in hearing all this. This is ratings. I was having yeah. fun. Some yeah. of it. This is interesting X, for him. Yeah. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Gosh. He is. He is yet to even be able to talk to a buckle bunny. So it's, he needs the pointers. Oh my goodness. Okay. <sighs> it's not that hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, wow. That was that easy, huh? Okay. You're just going there. Was, was, yeah. Well, wow. Whatever. We were in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Good and, place. Yes, Easy, we were in Tampa, Florida. Cheap. Tampa's not cheap, no. Tampa, Florida. Yeah. And uh anyway, I was there with a friend. Left with me. Mm hmm <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. Tiffany Davis was like, You need to marry her. She kind of takes the credit for hooking us up. So was there a long dating she period or was it there that night? Yes, she was. She was in Florida? Oh, wow. She's going to be real upset that you didn't even remember her being there. Come on. I know you've been hitting the head a little bit, but, yeah, she was there. All right. Wow. You should get her on the phone if you want to get back on the phone. Like, this is going to be terrible. I can't believe you don't remember her being there. I just remember you. That's wow. Oh, that was a good one, actually. Yeah, I, I, He's I, making I, some points up. Lord. All he remembers about Tampa is Eva. That's a good line. That's, yeah. That's a country song. Yes, it is. <laughs> good grief. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, so fast forward, I met in Tampa, and what I got out of that is <laughs> all he remembers is you, and then maybe you were married the next day? I don't know. There's not a lot of details. Was well, we did say we period? loved each other that night. Really? Oh, yeah. She said it first, so. Really? Yeah. Well, that's I, special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You did. Yeah, and I did. You've told this story many times to people in private, now you just tell it on air. No, I told all the story in church one time and got really 
really big trouble by a bunch of older women who said, I'm just not supposed to say all that all the time. Well, those old birds, they don't, no one <laughs> loves them. Birds. Yeah. Old birds. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you may text them and tell them. Quit. The just stop. <laughs> you got all their numbers? You got a group message well, going? I'll get it from her. Yeah. She's got everybody's number. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Put the wall <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so we're fast forwarding. <laughs> Moving on. From Tampa to marriage, six children, buck and bull business, obviously a PBR world championship. You've got a ministry. I mean. I didn't win the world championship. My little brother did, but that's all right. Hey, Riley. Thanks for rubbing that in. Hey, Riley. <laughs> hey, Riley, what's up? Did you hear all that? She, uh, you gave me bad information. See, I can't know everything. I asked her, hey, give me just some cliff notes. She wants me to know, let you know that she's not there anymore. Oh, she let, yeah. <laughs> so the data puller in the back, the scheduler. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's on her. Rookie of the year was yours though, right? Back in nine. Yeah, You won a little bit, like five, just a little bit. You were you were like known a little bit, you know. Whoa. Your son may not have quite known everything that you won. It, it was a funny kind of uh, wacy. Uh, our kids didn't really know. I mean, like we don't really. He doesn't like say, "Oh, this is what I've won" or whatever. And yeah. Um, I think you guys were watching Calgary one time. And was at Jerome Davis's house. Yeah. And was watching Calgary and was talking about how cool the rodeo was, how prestigious and so on and so on. And my son, he looks at me and says, Dad, you ever, you ever read at Calgary? Calgary. Calgary. Where you? <laughs> said, yeah. Matter of fact, <laughs> I have. I said, Were you eat cereal every morning? That big trophy in front of you? That's, yeah, I want it. Yeah. He's like, Well, no clue. Do you ever ride in the PBR with Jess Lockwood? <laughs> so great. Yeah, he says, Dad, did you ever ride in the PBR? A little bit. A couple times. <laughs> I was riding home from a... He has no clue. That no. How old is he? 12. 12? 12? Mm -hmm. He's homeschool's working for him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, so... <laughs> Good grief. So do you get... Do He's like a ready? ray of hope. This is what I live with all the time. That's why I'm so connected to Jesus. True speaker. <laughs> Well, <laughs> just you know what Jesus says. <laughs> so does that? I mean, so does that mean do your kids rodeo? Or are you guys, or you just kind of you don't get into it too much with them? I mean, that is an interesting thing because it seems like if you rodeo, generally you're pushing your kids to rodeo too. We don't push our kids to anything. Really? Yeah. No, they, like they can do what they want. Yeah, we don't. We're not that. Um, we've never wanted to be that kind of parent. You know, like we want them, we would love for them to be in the Western industry and the, and the lifestyle. We love the lifestyle that we lead, but um, we have kids that kind of like, Wacy likes to have fun. You know, he's, he's into hunting and fishing and if he, and he loves to rope and he, and he likes to do cowboy stuff, but uh, we don't really push him to do, he rode bulls and sheep, he, Got on when he, you know, when he was a kid, but like, I don't say when he's a kid, he's still a kid, but like when he was little, you know, we kind of uh, went that route with him, but he never really, he just likes to have a good time. Yeah. And we don't want to influence him in the way that they don't want to be influenced. Um, you know, so that's something that's important to us. My, our daughter, like, uh, Mac likes fashion. She likes stuff like that. And she can ride a horse and she's not scared of them. Loves getting her hands on him. Got a, uh, has a lot more patience than a lot of people, a lot of grown ups that I know. You know, with with animals and things like that. But um, and we have, of course, our little ones, and they're kind of into all things right now. They may have horses saddled during the day, and they might ride all day, and then they might saddle them and tie them to the post. <laughs> porch posts and not touch them all day right like they're just there you know as cars if they want to go pretend like they're driving up and down the road you know so like hey, we just don't um we don't want to push them towards anything that they don't want to pursue yeah i think that's important with kids especially nowadays and you see it in our industry i mean i know like when i was growing up I and mean, we were pushed pretty hard to do stuff with horses to the point where like we didn't know if there was another way you could make money right I was glad yeah. I figured out that there was another way to make money. It worked yeah. out better for me that I kind of got away from it. Worked out good for my sister. Yeah. Worked out great for her, but right. not so much the, the rest of us. And I think if you let kids just find their path and do what they want to do, yeah. usually they come back to it. Yeah, and that's important to let them have that freedom. I mean, at some point, regardless of whether or not we were influenced in a certain way, we all have the choice of freedom, you know. No matter what the government tells you. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True story. So six kids, oldest is 12. What's the down the line? I mean, so we've been foster parents for the last going on 12 years now. And we have, um, we've had issues, you know, along the way getting pregnant. I've got 13 babies in heaven and, uh, we knew that we always wanted to adopt and that really is the route that came most natural for us not because it was the easiest route um it's probably been the hardest truthfully you know and, uh, we've adopted uh Wacy when he was we he was two days old and whenever, but we knew he was getting him three months before he was born yeah and anytime you're pursuing adoption even there's no guarantee even I mean, parents have a two week gap after that baby's born to make. Yeah, a decision, you hear you know kind like, of horror stories for yeah. foster parents when they get the baby kind of taken from them and they go back to a pretty unsavory place and it's yeah. just the way the state protects the it is. biological parent. Mm-hmm. It is, and and you know we, Wacy was born in Michigan and we I f- we were there for a month with him and uh, that was crazy and terrible at times. Um, a year later, we were told about a little girl and. We pursued her through the state. Wacy was private adoption, and Mac was was uh, not. So when you say private, you're going directly with the parent, essentially, we were an agreement going, between them. It was through an agency. Through an agency, and yeah. they connect you with a parent. You you get chosen. Like okay. you send out so many different profiles of yourself, and um, we were chosen the first profile, which was pretty significant because we were told a year. And really? Within a, we were we started the process in October of 2008, and we were chosen by uh, December. 2008 and uh, Wacy Dalton was born March 2009 and so we it was a pretty fast process and yet when he was born it was pretty slow because we were there for, for a, a month with uh, you know that was quite the ordeal Jacob's mom had passed away the same day Wacy was born so there was highs and lows and um, hills and valleys and uh, you know we it it just wasn't an easy thing, but um, none of the adoptions that we've been through, except for maybe Elsie Grace. Yeah, Littlefoot's was easy. Littlefoot's was probably the easiest one. She um, also came through the state. We fostered over in between 50 and 60 kids over the last 12 years. Emergency placement, not like long term. Really? Just where it was like there for a couple of days until they could go to a permanency because of how much we travel and how busy we are. Uh, we've done a couple of long term that were just to help maybe uh, kids go back to the environment that they might have been taken out of for different reasons, circumstances, different things like that, that they might have needed stability in that area and the system helped them get that stability. Um, we've been through uh, we've been through a lot of hell with it, you know, and for the past three and a half years, we're basically just coming out of it. So when you say six kids, we are actually in the final month of adopting our last three. So we just signed disclosure. Um, we haven't fully adopted the three yet, but that's happening. So we can speak about that now, Sure. but we, uh, we, it's, it's our, um, our five-year-old siblings. So we have had them for the last three and a half years and, uh, it's been a trial, for yeah. sure. Goodness, I can't imagine. I mean, they're probably pretty resistant to a lot of stuff, especially with, I mean, the kind of lifestyle you guys live. It probably looked completely foreign to these kids, huh, when they come in? Mm, with them, they were so little yeah. because they were like uh, three and four. Okay. And so uh, they entered in at a, at a young age. And I, I've known the family since Elsie. We adopted her. I mean, she came into our home when she was in 2015. She was two days old. Um And three months later, they relinquished their rights. I actually um, still have a connection with the birth parents. Um, And so I've helped her over the years try to, you know, get reunited with her little ones. And some things worked out and some things didn't. But, um, you know, it's sometimes when you pursue a plan, you just kind of have to go at it with each step instead of trying to say, I know what's going to happen a week or whatever down the line and and that's kind of a battle in your mind you know yeah so. i can only imagine so what was it that made you guys decide that you wanted to to do that i mean that's that's a huge commitment to do i mean and which probably part? which part? well to be foster parents oh yeah i mean that's it's mm. got to be a very long drawn out decision maybe it was i can honestly say it was not our idea at all um 
we didn't want to be foster parents. We did not. Uh, the deal with Michaela, yeah, kind of. It was through the state, so you had to almost foster into adoption. Mm-hmm. So I had we had gotten Wacy, which was my son. Every guy wants a boy, so. And then uh, when um, the the opportunity become some friends of ours said, "Hey, this." Little girl is needs to be adopted. She's in the foster system, and we'd like for y'all to adopt her so we can at least see where she goes and see her grow up and know she'll be loved. And and then she's like, "That's my girl. That's my daughter. I get I get me. Like, Fair enough. <laughs> I got my boy. You can have your girl. Then we'll just try naturally for the rest of our lives and be happy ever after. And so we had the we had the hours planned." The one she planned, and then the uh oh, which mm-hmm. was Littlefoot, kind of. No, we wasn't expecting to get her really. Just the yeah. hospital called. Hey, the mom, dad can't have her because she's tested positive and this and that. So we need somebody to come get her. And I was like, all right. Well, she brought her in, hands her to me, and I'm like, I don't know if we're he was like, do it. not bring a little girl home. Do well, not bring a girl, another girl. And it was kind of a joke, you know. And <laughs> and like I and remember he was watching a Rangers mm-hmm. game. And her little foot was in his hand, and it was her, she was like four pounds ten ounces when she came home with us. Her lungs oh, wow. weren't. She was thirty four weeks when she was born, and the hospital. I look back at her papers, like because we're going through this process now with our new babies and our little ones, and I say new, like they've been with us for three and a half years. But right, um, looking at their their profile, looking at her profile, because we had to do that for this new case, um, because of family information and things you have to update for your for this and. Um, she was 34 weeks when she was born or and this like three or four days old when we got her and like she's still premature and not even supposed to be born yet and y'all are sending her home because face it nobody's gonna pay the hospital bill so they're just like let her go somewhere it's crazy like so to think that Lynn she was nursing literally a nurse for this baby for however long yeah but I could tell when she came in the house and we held her it was like yeah. She was like the palm of his hand. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know where this one's going to go, but it ain't leaving here. <laughs> so, and their little feet was just that. They were they, so they tiny. wasn't that long. Yeah. And uh, I stuck little foot on her that day, and it's she's been a little foot ever since for five years. Yeah, people that like um, watch videos or see pictures or wherever we go when we travel, they're like, they don't even know her name is Elsie Grace. You know, they're just like house foot. You know, and so. Uh, that's kind of significant, you know. She, she, I think she probably thinks her name is Littlefoot. No, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have we've been in this for, amongst all the other things that that life has brought. Like this has been the most trying, probably. I mean, I, I couldn't hope to imagine what that what that's like. I mean. I mean, the, the whole miscarriage thing, I mean, I, I have, my wife went through that too, yeah. and just once, but very traumatic. And yeah. one of those things that just doesn't leave. So no. I get it. And to, I mean, for it to be that many times, just that's, that's pretty interesting. I find it really interesting how JW talked about that little girl. I mean, you got this exterior and yeah. PBR bull rider, ranchy as shit, <laughs> which I love. And, uh, you know, you talk about that little kid and it's like, this all this could have been your idea, actually. A lot of it. Just based yeah. on how you're talking about that kid, and you maybe wouldn't think that with the dynamic you guys have. It's pretty interesting. Well, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't want a bunch of girls. <laughs> <laughs> that part's not hard to believe. And, uh, <laughs> and so now with the six, only two of them are boys. And it's pretty rough. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but I love them. I wouldn't take for them. But and each one of them has a different piece of your heart but and Wacy being the first in the boy he's got he's not the oldest though like he's not the oldest yeah he's just the first yeah yep. six months yeah that, you know there's like a you six know, month so, gap. but he's like the first in the boy and so he's got this part and then michaela's got this part but then littlefoot has this part <laughs> so it's tough Everybody else got their own piece, but Littlefoot is daddy's girl. And when you get one that's daddy's girl, it's different. It's different. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. 
And so those three, you guys will always have. Like that's it's official. You guys yeah. fully have them adopted. Yeah. And so, I mean, not to pry too much. It's just interesting, right? Because I actually don't really know anybody who has adopted kids for some odd reason. Much I mean, less yeah. or, or talk about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> well yeah. okay. Or so like I have much, a, he, he, we kind of like have a running joke about like I would always bring the kids home, but he always brings like cattle and dogs. I and bring horses, horses and dogs in. Like all the things. Everybody's like, I got to. Got a cur dog over here. He's dog. like, no more. Yeah, you're not bringing yeah, any more dog. kids home. Like, when are you going to start bringing dogs home? So, like, you know, That's not that they're the same, but. Yeah. Yeah. The conversation's <laughs> about the same. But, like, I was thinking, <laughs> you, you could swap out horse, kid, or dog with this conversation. <laughs> It'd be all right. Uh, if dog don't work out, they're just a 22 shell away or a friend to loan, give them to. And the kids are a little different. Kids are a little, 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 little bit different. It's a little <laughs> different. I hope, like, we're going there. Yeah. That's what I mean. Kids are different. You, you, when you bring them in, they're there. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, kids are so fragile. And I can horrible. always sell off all the dogs and horses. but Yeah. Kids are really, really fragile. And um, especially whenever they come from environments that aren't healthy. Yeah. You know, and so when they come into your environment, they're coming into a healthy, a healthy environment. And that's kind of, um, they don't really know how. I mean, it depends. Like we've had a lot of different kids come through our home. Yeah. Uh, well, it's hard when a little girl comes in and you try to hug her and it scares her. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. And when you try to be that father figure to her and you wrap her up and grab her and squeeze her and it scares her. Yeah. 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 So. You probably had to learn how to mitigate that relearn, kind of thing. Yeah, and really. Yeah, you, know, you do. You didn't have that with Wacy. You didn't have that with Michaela. And you didn't have that with Littlefoot. But when they come in as five, six-year-old kids that's been through traumatic whatever and and you're trying to be a dad figure and wrestle them around grab them up and hug on them and and it just freaks them out you're yeah. like hey oh sorry yeah you know, so yeah we've had some really been. incredible people in our life too though that like i'm a firm believer in counseling and i think that that's uh some i would not have known how to address a lot of what we've walked through without it really and i think that it's healthy for for um you know uh, it can be healthy. It, there's definitely the scenarios that are, can be unhealthy, but yeah, I was going to say know, I've had negative with, experiences yes, with counseling as a kid when my right. folks were getting split up, and I just yeah. I didn't enjoy the counseling. I thought it made things worse for me personally. Yeah. Yes, I bet it has to do with the actual counselor you end up with, probably. Huh? I think too. <laughs> that's exactly I think you're I'd exactly make a good right. Counselor then, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> so, like I tell you that we had an incredible counselor. We were given a name and. I think the first of all, like, you know, we, we held the same values with our Christian values, but she was also honest with me and she didn't mute the mic. She was honest with me and, uh, I needed to hear some of the things that she said. And, and then the girls needed to hear some of the things that she said as well, you know, and one of the things that she always said to him, she said, you know, you have to find your voice and you have a voice and that's important and so that's one thing that we've taught our kids is that your voice is important you know and what you've gone through matters and just you know you can be in a bad mood you just can't stay there you can't sit in your pee pants all day kind of thing that it's okay to be upset and I think that's kind of rolled over into um it's not just for a kid it's for an adult too but uh she passed away our counselor passed away in January this year and she uh would be so proud of where that where we are now you know so um i think it's it can be like you said it can be a, de- a definite negative if it's not the right one um but with the right one wow you can really turn a corner yeah i mean and counseling is it's so much more of a broad stroke thing than just hey here's your 150 dollars an hour let me sit down with you and have this conversation i mean what you put on your instagram by the way which i lo- i actually really enjoy watching what you say um even if they are 10 minutes i actually like to watch them because she, she has really Good testament. I stay and, focused for about a minute and a half. Yeah, it's different for you, though. Yeah, I mean, you've been he hitched to her it. for 15 years. <laughs> I was so. about to say. So she's probably preaching to you all day. I got to live with her. Yeah. <laughs> get to live with her. It's pretty cool. But uh, it's, sometimes uh, it's got to. Sometimes you get to live with her. Sometimes that's gotta. That's familiarity talking. And that's how it is. You've been with somebody forever, and at some point, you just, those heads are going to butt. And then you I got to tell her to get out of her pee pants and come on. Yeah. Which I appreciate, like, and I really do. Like, I think that that's a healthy relationship, you know, when you can have somebody that can. Uh, I was raised on a dairy, so I was raised working. I was, you know, I didn't have all the, 
and he didn't have all the glitz and glam. We were kind of raised around the same kind of working, you know, where yeah. we had to, you had to, you had to work for, and you appreciated it a little bit more. And I think that, um, you know, my parents, you mentioned divorce and my parents divorced. His did not. Uh, and yet probably again, should have a couple times. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the truth. They tried, you know, but, um, but you learn if you're willing to open yourself up to learning uh, that everything takes effort, um, that some things are a gift, but with, with that, every day takes effort, you know, so that's important. <clears throat> and for us, like, I think it's healthy to have that relationship where you can get real with one another instead of trying to, I mean, there's so many relationships that I've listened to that of people that you are clueless that they're not in a good place because they look so good everywhere. And they, we kind of joke and we kind of pick with one another, but I mean, he's my best friend and, and I wouldn't have it any other way because, um, he has toughened me up in a lot of ways. Uh, I think that I'd like to say that I've softened him up in a couple of places, you know, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's the kids that have really done that more than anything, you know, and, and that's just kind of, life in general but I don't know yeah no I think you're totally right I mean I listen the last year I've got into like a little bit of philosophy stuff I've never really been that guy but I think like the world's so crazy right now I think the best thing we can do is just try to be better right I mean it sounds corny but if you can absorb anything that's positive because we're just surrounded by negativity if you rodeo on frick you're surrounded by the negativity because they keep canceling the damn rodeos or the money's not right or this or that or you the know, dirt ain't right. The dirt ain't well. I mean, that's barrel racing. That yeah. can be bull riding too. That <laughs> can, can be, be bull riding, riding too. Yeah, but, like that uh, can be. <laughs> but had that. but I mean, if we're talking about just the world we're living in right now, yeah. I mean, you're around these parts. I mean, there is like there's very little. Like if you're in any kind of industry, you know, yeah. I I have another business and it's it has to do with industry and right now like steel, aluminum, can't get it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's keeping food out of people's mouths and there's nothing you can do about it. So you've yeah. got to lean into positive stuff. Just like if you're going down the road rodeo and I mean, that's a tough deal. You know that better than anybody. Got to sit back and breathe. Just let it breathe. He always said, and it's kind of stuck with me, but you know, they can't eat you. And you can look at that literally, like you can look at it different, you know, however you want to, but that's really the truth. You know, like they can try. And we've been in some situations that they, I feel like you feel like you're losing your breath a little bit. You know, you're kind of getting choked out. And um, he's always reminded me that they can't eat you. And at the end of the day, you just kind of, you do, you have to breathe deep. And I mean, I, I breathe deep and I pray deep, you know, deeper because, um, you know, I, you, you just have to keep moving your feet. You just, you can't quit because we do live in a world that expects us to quit. They expect, especially with like Christianity, you know, I mean, they look at us like we're weak and, and we're not. Well, they assume, like if you're a Christian, right? So the broad stroke assumption, we don't really deal with it in our industry because our industry has just got this bubble over it, which I don't love that because we're not exposed to as much you know, as much adversity as far as like that sort of thing, usually, because everybody kind of is the same, right? Like most of your people in our industry are going to be, you know, God fearing, loving people for the most part, they're going to be conservative type people for the most part, you're going to find a pretty straight and narrow value set, right? More or less, you know, compared to the whole world, but you get out there in the regular world, like, or what I call the regular world, non subculture. And man, if you tell somebody you're a Christian, or a conservative or just whatever. And I'm trying not to make it political, but they look at you like you're missing a couple of teeth. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of enjoy those conversations a little bit and, and I travel a little bit more outside of the box rather than just in the industry with, with the Western world and culture and whatnot. And I think like getting to um, travel in ministry and getting to do what I do, I'm not going to the same, same denomination. I'm in different churches. I'm around different um, political you know, uh, circles from time to time. And, and it's, it's okay to let people breathe and have that conversation. I think they expect you to be uh, confrontational. And when you're not, it's, you just enjoy a good conversation. 
it kind of throws the game off for that because I'm not looking to prove a point. I've been the one that wanted to prove a point before. And my dad was like, hey, so, like, you need to stop trying to convince everybody of something. I'm like, Ugh, you know, and and that's – I think we kind of all sometimes get into that when we believe in something really firmly. But sometimes you just have to be the evidence of what you believe. And sometimes you just need to be a better example of what you believe and what you choose. And that takes – um effort I mean being a cowboy takes effort you know being what you do takes effort and people see what we do by the evidence of how we walk and what we do in it with our walk and so I think that's important just saying yeah there was going to be something big coming out of your mouth and you just backed off I saw it no he was agreeing he's like, that's the agreeable the one. husband no <laughs> well I mean yeah. it is true all those those things and I think that's why Christianity fits so good with cowboy lifestyle right because they're both like they're both gritty pass they just are right you gotta, you gotta be gritty to rodeo you just do because if you don't you're not gonna go very far and if you're not gritty as a christian then you're gonna fizzle out and quit on it yeah and that's just the truth because you're gonna catch i mean it's that doesn't matter how deep you get into the bible or not necessarily like the actual words but i mean that's a manual thing it's probably gonna suck for a little bit like you gotta get in the mud if you're gonna be a decent christian i mean it's it's one of like the three pillars of that you know? yeah we've we've felt the heat of that and i i, I think i could probably elaborate on that a little yeah. bit even even to the point to without details of um the last couple of years we'll just say in the last couple of years we've hit some licks where uh, we were really tested in a way because we do live in the limelight. Like we are out in the public. Everyone knows I'm a Christian. Everyone knows that, you know, this is what I profess. This is how I speak. This is what I live. But they also know that I'm transparent and that I'm not perfect and I don't try to play that. But when you're tested, you have to sit back and say, how am I going to respond to this? And there are nights where over the last couple of years where we've been really tested in a place where, I mean, we've had, We've had this, the, when we started the pursuit of where we are right now, um, I've been told that, you know, when you're up against a system, a system like the DHS, which is what we have been, um, you know, in because we're foster parents yeah. for the past couple of years, I've been told different things, uh, especially whenever you may not agree with what you're sitting across the table from that, um, or when you try to go up against whatever you're trying to go up against, you just talked about your industry and where you are and what you're up against. And when you sit across the table with someone and they say, well, you know, Leanne, you're up against a Goliath. That's a, that's a, that's a language I understand because in the Bible, there's a story of David and Goliath and I, and I know how to respond to that, but that doesn't mean I always know how to, to react with, to that, you know, like, Yes, I'm up against a Goliath, and I can respond in a way, which is what I did, that, yeah, well, I know what happened to him. You know, he fell. And But if that's all you know and you don't know what took place after that, then you forget that even though he fell, there was still work to be done. You know, you still had to run to that Goliath, and you had to, David still had to cut Goliath's head off. You know, it still got a little bit brutal in that in that moment. And, and um, here we are now – you say those things and you feel like so full of faith in what you're doing. And then your faith is rocked whenever um, the chair is pulled out from underneath you from time to time. And you, you hit a really, really rough lick and you have um, something taken from you and you have to go speak about how fear is a liar the very next morning. And you realize just how big God is that, you know, these things that you're walking through are not a shock to him. So, Obviously, he's not going to leave you to do it by yourself is the way that I look at things. So, um, But that doesn't mean that I'm this super strong person because I'm the weakest person <laughs> in the world. I cannot do it without my faith, period. And so I think that it's important as a Christian to not always try to be so strong. You know, that's such a cliche because we think, oh, we're so tough. We're not. It's God who's tough. It's 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 our faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone that's tough. It's, it's saying that I can be weak because of him his strengths, you know? So, and that's, that's just, um, because everything that we've went through, uh, over the last couple of years has, um, got me in a place mentally. It's a, it affects you physically, mentally, and spiritually, and you still have to wake up and f feed your animals or, you know, cook dinner or wash clothes and go up and down the road and make a living. 
still provide for your family and do it all over again. Yeah, I mean, that's a fact. <laughs> And especially if you raise animals. I mean, if you guys, I mean, you guys have your stock contracting, that those things that you do. doesn't matter if you're training horses or, or raising bucking bulls. I mean, they got to eat. They got to eat. I ain't a horse trainer, that's yeah. for sure. Well, you're smart. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get into horse training. Yeah. <laughs> We've got friends that are really good at that. <laughs> yeah, so don't, don't we all? Yeah. yeah, thankfully. Don't we all? Thankfully. There's a lot of them who are way better at it than, than me. That's I for always sure. tell people, like, we're really good delegators sometimes. They're like, how do you do all that you do? And you're like, we've got really good friends in our life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for people that are willing to help. So I, I, I just have more questions, not the pry, as far as, like, the whole foster thing. Is there a, like, once you're in that system, do they – come to you time and time again kind of every time at least or is it like a, an area that you are kind of the main foster parent like I, I mean it's it's such a kind of an interesting concept right because i yeah, it might as well be chinese i don't understand any of it it might as well be chinese to me too yeah because i i don't know how to get into it she got us into it but it's they call it 10 at night 11 at night midnight one two in the morning hey public or domestic violence kids got to leave the house they got to have a place to stay can you go here? Or can we bring them to you? We have had, so we have been, you know, foster parents for this length of time. A lot of the kids, JW actually hasn't been home for um, because he might have been on the road. So we've had several random experiences, some that you have been there for and some that you haven't been there for. But, you know, we have. We did, like I said, we did not really get in. I didn't want to be a foster parent. Like I did not. Yeah, I can't imagine many people want to no, do it. Like we we foster we we adopted Wacy, and then I was called about this little girl that we were supposed to be able to adopt in three months. Like she was coming up for adoption right. in her case, and that ended up being a two and a half year process because of all the things that all the details that came up from that, and we were already in by that time. And a year later, we were called to see if we would take on two more children. And I said, well, I, you know, we really travel a lot, and I really don't know if we can do this. And I don't even have a vehicle. Like, we had trucks that would carry all the kids plus us. And it ended up being a three-month thing. I kind of got brought into it in a way where it didn't feel so good. Like, this wasn't supposed to last like what it was. And I'm there. I've got some really great friends in the DHS system that have been really honest with me that they see when you've got a heavy load, you're about to hit your point, and they're like, okay, we're going to we're gonna put these, place these kids with other, we're trying to get them out of there. And, and there's some real negatives about DHS, I will say that. What does DHS stand the for? The D- Department of Human Services okay. for a CPS for Texas, okay. so DHS for Oklahoma. Yeah. And so we there's some really – big negatives and there's also really big positives uh and everybody wants the positives but nobody really wants to go through the negatives and because you have to deal with people and we kind of sometimes i feel like with like you kind of want to pursue people like we do some of these cattle that get out on the neighbor and just time down and leave them for a little while i mean like learn your lesson be nice next time you know or whatever but we uh we've we just i don't know we just we're honest we had our we had we had mac and we were going through everything with her we were asked to to take some kiddos a year later that were two little ones and thankfully a friend of mine was like leanne you're gonna have to you can't do this and i and i love you and i know you're trying to do all these things but listen you're gonna have to say no i'm calling and she was part of the dhs she came to check on me and she was like i'm calling them we're gonna get these kids moved um and she did, and I got to stay in touch with those kids at the time. And from that, she said, are you still willing to be a foster parent? And I was like, only if I don't have to deal with a certain county. And that's exactly what I said. And for several years, I would deal with surrounding counties. And we had a lot of kids come through. Like JW said, you might be called in the middle of the night. You're not provided so it, with things. Like a lot of times they don't come with things. So if anybody's listening to this and you're saying, well, I would like to be in, involved, but I don't think I could be a foster parent, you know, call your local um, uh, foster, you know, DHS or CPS or whatever in your county and see if there's any way that you can donate diapers or milk or clothes or anything, if there's a place to do anything like that with, because it's so important because not everybody's like us where we had 
the ability to to get some things and and to the have system, the system needs more people though to be fosters. Yeah. Really? Yes. We are the only foster county foster. We parents. were the only foster parents in our county, and we but still are like the only traditional. Because you don't know, like yeah. You, I mean, you got to go through all this crap to. Not everybody's course, experience is as terrible as ours. Like I don't courses, want it to sound like it's you like go through all these courses or whatever to be certified for DHS to take DHS kids in, but. Once you and, and so they find out you're okay, you're a good person. You're not going to, yeah. yeah, be bad to the kids or whatever. So, but then you can have those kids come from bad. Situ- they don't, they don't take kids out of good homes to go put them in foster care. They come out of terrible situations. <clears throat> so, if they're with you overnight, two days, two weeks, two months, two years, might be the only form of, yeah, you know, goodness. Love. Goodness, life. Yeah. Healthy. Um, you know, there's a word I'm looking for. I, you know, any kind of stabilization, stable life. They might, they get a glimpse from your life of what's possible. Of what's possible. Or, you know, just in, in it, that might be what sets them on the right track when they leave, where they go back to a kinship home or an adoptive home. Right. So you got to, you have a chance to put, two hours or two days of good in a kid. Yeah. So, you know, I I will say like everything in our story has manifested to work together. Like Wacy was born in 2009 in March, 2009. We were called about Mac in January of 2010. She was 16 months old and she had been in the system for three months. She, when she came to us, it was such a radical experience because she came to us almost a year to the date that Wacy was born, March 14th. He was born March 18th. And there was a letter that came with her. And it was from her foster grandma that she had been living with for three months. I read this letter and I had, there was a number on there and I thought, I'm going to call her because she was um, living three hours away in Lawton. That's where she was fostered at and I called this grandma and I'm talking to her and I'm going to hang the phone up and I was like well just anytime you want to call anytime just you want to come see her like you are so welcome to come here our door is always open she said did you just what did you say your name was and I said Leanne she goes Leanne what and I said Leanne Hart she said oh my gosh so in January of this year I was at a conference and you sang a song called temporary home by Carrie Underwood, and I came up to you after the conference, and I told you I was a foster parent, and you told me, you know, you said I could never be a foster parent, and I've had your daughter for three months, and that's three hours away. That's pretty significant. That's huge. That's very huge, and so, like, that was just one of the cool experiences that we had, and... Pull your crybaby pants up. Yeah, I might cry for a minute. (laughs) I mean, if you're going to you know, cry like, for something, that's I don't a think good, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good, that's a good thing. one. You know, that, that'll that forever get me. And that kind of gets left out sometimes, like how this all transpired. Because by the time Wacy, we decided to adopt, it was 2008. In October, we had had four miscarriages. Everyone around you is getting pregnant. People are, you know, wanting to do anything and everything that they can to make you feel better. And nothing can really fill that void. Nothing can really do that and. I knew from a young age I was supposed to be a mama. I always knew it from the time you're standing outside in your front yard and you're putting the pillow or whatever it is as little girls do right? to see the shadow that with the, the pregnancy pillow, you know, and, and you think about that, Carrie, and I still have that desire. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to sit here and tell you that um, I still don't have that desire to carry. Of course, I think JW is like, okay, we're good now. But I know. bet so. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, a basketball team and a bench warmer is good for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, like, you start saying, okay, Lord, like, what's your plan? Because obviously mine's not working out. And um, and then this just starts to happen. You just say yes. And even though it's not easy, you just pursue it. And um, it just starts to kind of fill, fill the gap in all the areas. But... Uh, I look around and I see other, because of everything we've kind of walked through, 
we've been able to be a voice for maybe others that might be walking through a really tough time, answer some questions for them, give them like, if they're going one way, might tell them to veer left or whatever, because this isn't a, the right route. This isn't a good route or whatever. But, um, we, we've had a, some pretty radical experiences with it. And, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I, mean, I, can, I agree. I, can I bet he cries during Old Yeller, but probably not for any of the stuff you cry about. Huh? <laughs> oh. And where the red fern grows. The same yeah. deal. Yeah. <laughs> right. yep. That's the typical thing. The ranchy guys cry during Old Yeller where the red Ooh. fern grows. And what was that one horse movie? It makes everybody cry. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cowboys when John Wayne dies. That's a good point, too. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. That is a good movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually a really good movie. I like the I like the beginning of that movie where they're all bucking out the horses. Yeah, I do yeah. too. That's so my do all the kids. Movie. They love that. They love Name's that movie. Clyde Potter. Everybody calls me Fats. I'm leaning towards the gut myself. <laughs> 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 all right. So last question about the foster thing before there's any more tears. But it uh, like what is the actual process? Like what? How do you guys have it set up? Like if a kid comes in. It's just a fascinating concept if you know nothing about it, right? It's like you're to talk to somebody about how to split an atom would probably be interesting for a minute. <laughs> and uh, this is just interesting to me because I just can't imagine like so someone drops them off and they got maybe a pillow, maybe a, a book bag or nothing. Clothes on their back. Yeah. yeah, maybe. And how do you even like what do you what's the steps from when they get out of that car to however long? I mean, I just can't imagine. Do they try to run away sometimes? I mean, what happens? You know, we didn't. If they're take... old enough to carry feed sacks. And back, hey, we go to the barn. And they love First it. thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like, honestly. But they do, you know what? Most kids love that stuff. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. they do. It is They're crazy. getting to be part of something, yep. whereas maybe before they weren't. Yep. We got a boy that was six. Was he 16? 16. He was 16. We, we've never, let's clarify first. Like, we, you can be very si specific about who you will take into your home. You do need to evaluate that about yourself. Like, we didn't want to take older girls or, and there's reasons for all of these things. We had reasons for everything that we did and, and that we do because um, we are in the public. We just didn't want to invite anything in that wouldn't have possibly been healthy. You don't know what the kids have been through. You don't know what kind of attention Not, not just for our seeking, sake, but for our families, for our kids sake too, what so. they've been through, what they may bring in, you know, whether it's domestic, sexual abuse, like all the different abuses. There's so much, but we would, we only took two. I only remember one that was of any age of 16 or yeah better. but we we so yeah we took i said i guess the kid that aged out um i won't say his name but like we so the the, the system is so broken in so many areas and yet so i hope this inspires somebody to be like i can see <laughs> avenue now like i need to do this the but, one kid that came though he, <laughs> he'd never driven he's 16 never driven so i was like cool you're fixing to learn how to drive we got a big place Yep. Truck, fix and go feed. You can learn how to drive. He spills about 600 pounds of feed off the back <laughs> of the truck. First thing, right out in the middle of the road. I'm like, oh. And, and he doesn't want to get onto him because who knows yeah, what like, he's been through. Yeah, so we just went back, got us 600 more pounds, and <laughs> started over. He rode a horse. He rode a gator, four-wheeler, like, in the couple of days that he was there. We he, loved him. He wound up running off from yeah, I did. his grandmother's house trying to come back to our house. Really? Yeah. yeah. We, um, Wacy, he, he had a name, I won't say his name on here, but Wacy thought his name was well, Jim. nobody knows. Oh, I don't know. Like, it was Anthony. Okay, there I mean, you go. How many, how many Anthonys you know? It was one of them. Like six? It was one <laughs> of them. Quit, leave me alone. I so, know one who grew up with a monkey who has a bunch of issues. <laughs> there you go, that's awesome. But Wacy. <laughs> got a pet. Wacy was four at the time, probably. Yeah. And he makes names for everybody. Every every kid that has ever come to our home, he changes way, their name. Ways he changes so their Anthony, name. So Anthony, Anthony was Jim. Jim. Yeah, we were like, Jim. Wacy, his name Jim. is his name come is on, Anthony. Jim. So, like, so so maybe it's the opposite of a horse because you know it's bad luck to change a horse's name, but maybe it's good luck maybe to change a person. Every name. child that go. has came through our home has always had a, a name given by Wacy Dalton. Well, this kid's like just answered him. All right, let's go do whatever. I'm like Wacy. His name's Anthony. It ain't Jim. He goes, I know. Yeah. Come on, Jim. <laughs> it was, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, he, he went home. He would have stayed, but we he wanted to go to a school that was, like, almost an hour away. And really? And couldn't do that every day. And so, anyway, he went home. He went back into the system, and he ended up running away and going. He actually went to his grandma's 
uh, he ran away from the DHS from DHS. the shelter and he went to her and then he wanted to come back but by that time um, for different reasons he couldn't but want to come back be a rancher yeah 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 but we've had a, we we've taken a lot of like little kids like we we've taken a lot of little kids and you know we've had some pretty crazy experiences um you just do not know what you're going to get and what's the craziest thing like an example okay something out of control this is fun this should, you should write a book okay the little girl probably yeah you can't you, you can't I'm like which you one you can't reprimand them you can't you can't spank them oh that you was a little boy you're talking about that was i thought it was a girl she got over and no, it was put a her boy. in a timeout chair it was a she went boy. to whopping her head against the wall it scared me to death i was like because like anytime they get injured you have to like get in a lot of trouble if you don't you report know report it right that. Away. yeah report like it. yeah first when we got back she jumped out of the back of my truck like she was 18 months old and I, like jumped out of the back of the truck and i thought oh my gosh we're gonna lose her you know i was panicking and he's like just take her up to the hospital make sure she's okay and she was but like this one little guy he um he had had some major violence in his home and was just a trauma from that and it was so i think sometimes taking them out of a bad environment putting them in a good environment they just it's such a different feel Shock. for them we ended up having to take him back the next day because he i couldn't have him in the house because of possibly injuring our kids but he he had actually already had and uh and i was like hey i've got to bring him you know back um to you guys and they understood completely understood but that was pretty wild but there was there was one there was a little one she was 18 months old and uh she had i didn't know what was wrong with her you weren't here for that one but she was 18 months old and she was so sweet so precious and i ended up having her for a weekend and she ended up um staying sick all weekend and i didn't know why i could not get her fever down she kept you know vomiting and just all these things and i would i ended up taking her to the doctor and um they couldn't figure out they were like maybe she's just got a little virus maybe it's her nerves from the new environment whatever and I ended up getting a call Monday Withdrawals. morning. She was mm -hmm. being fed meth in her bottle, and that had been found in her diaper bag. And they would have never left her if they would have known that. But it wasn't something that they knew, and they learned it over the weekend. And I, they major, they they were so apologetic about that. They were like, "We are so sorry. You know, we would never have have done that." And uh, that was kind of a wake up call. Uh, we didn't stop, pers you know, but we did start asking more questions after that. That was one where I was like, cool, we better, I want to know. And you do have the right as a foster parent to ask questions. You, you can get, is it, you know, you can ask as many questions as you want. You, you and need to down, ask questions. Turn down or accept whatever. Yeah. Like you need. It's got to be such a hard line to walk, right? Because he probably just you kills feel? you to see that. It does for her. Cause she wants to, she wants to save them, save everybody, save every one of them. Come on, I've I've evolved a little bit. Yeah, you have to harden up probably really. a lot. I have. Like I have evolved a little. She bit. really wants. She really has to save everybody. Save me, you. Let's just say I've been working on this for a year. Like I would, I'm not gonna put tie myself back to a whipping post that says Liam wants to save everyone. Okay, because I'm doing. I'm saying that in a, in a a great way though. Like she she wants. She has that heart to help everybody save everybody and she's learned you know that our kids come first our family comes first and so she's got it worked out but she even with that she still wants the best for that one that we can't take and if they got to go somewhere else they want them to be saved there you know so We've we've stayed. I've stayed in touch with a lot of the kids over of the years. Yeah. Really, um, you know, because I want to know. I want to know. You yeah, it probably know. makes you lose sleep when you go through something like that. You, you do. Like what's going to happen to them? Yeah, we had a little one. Well, it, every one of them that we've had have went. We've back gone to back. They've uh, gone back. Kinship homes. Mm -hmm. We thought we were going to. There was a little one one time. Boy. He was seven months. Oh my gosh, he was kinship so homes. Cute. Mean family. 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 Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there and was that a might one. be a grandparent or a sister or brother. Sure. Or uncles whatever oh we had we had one he was an older man he was 80 and he had had his little one he had had his granddaughter great granddaughter she was six or seven when she came to us she came 
to him when she was like three months old. He was 80, living alone. He raised her to the time we got her at six or seven. He let her go visit birth mom for a, a weekend. Cops got called. She got taken, and DHS would not allow her to go back to him because of his age. And it was, and so we worked with him. We 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 ended up long term fostering her for three months because we wanted her to be able to go back to him. She and, loved that man. Oh my gosh, she and, loved her and grandpa. He loved her. Yeah, his granddaughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great granddaughter. Great granddaughter. Yeah, he, yeah. And so she ended up getting to go back to an uncle and aunt that lived on the same property and that we helped with that process. Cause you have to get background checks. We've had our backgrounds checked every year for 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. <laughs> and then when, what the cool parts so of when the man, when the old man finally did passed pass away, away, he left that little girl, everything. everything. He left so her everything. She's pretty, yeah. pretty sad. Pretty sad. She had 13 so. siblings. Wow. Yeah. And so that's the majority of like the babies that get lost. And a lot of the babies, like, you want yeah. as a foster parent and even as an adoptive parent, we're open adoption with all of our kids. In other words, we still have open line of communication if a birth parent wants to have that. Do if, they usually? Not really. Like, but some. For like the first year, they yeah. kind of connect back and forth. From a guilt have, standpoint, now, now usually probably. Facebook, right? yeah. Like Facebook. Facebook like, stuff, they message or something. I, I mean, and you have to get, sometimes you have to kind of get a little firm about like uh, the line not crossing a certain line, you know, you need to establish that as a, an adoptive parent or as a foster parent because of what you know is safe for this little one. And it's just like any grown up with, or any parent with a child, you have, you set certain things, you know, foundationally that you don't want, you want to protect your kids from. So you want to protect those babies as well. But we, we've kept open line from, you know, social media and different things like that. And, our our our, da- our daughter that is uh, twelve, she got to meet her birth mom last year in January with her two the two siblings. Her birth mom was getting healthy, and over the years I've stayed in touch with her, and she went through a program to get healthy, and still and she now still has her two boys. Uh, that was tough because Mac at that point had questions for her. She was eleven. She had questions for her, and she pursued those like she was like and I told her I said write them down and ask her if you want if you feel led to ask her because this may be the only opportunity you have to do that and I think that's healing you know to be able to even at that young age if you have something on your heart you should be able to to ask that and um she did she said you know why did you choose drugs over me you know why are you fighting for them but you didn't fight for me and her birth mom was able to be really honest with her and say I couldn't even fight for myself you know, and so this was the best thing for you. Um, and that was, I mean, we've had, we've, that's been the hardest things I think that we've gone through over, because those aren't the things that you want to really be a part of. Like you're part of it because this is your story, but it's not something I think anybody would choose to want to go through. I, I just wanted to have babies naturally and do all the natural things. And I, I still look at other families that do that and it doesn't look easy either. So, <laughs> you know, I think everybody has a level of difficult. And so and different levels of tolerance. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Hmm. I mean, I find the whole, I guess I, I never come in here with a plan, but I I didn't really know what was going there. And it's, yeah. it's super interesting to hear kind of what you guys are yeah, doing. Yeah, I thought we was going to talk about bull riding and yeah fun stuff i'm having cool a blast <laughs> we barely talked about bull riding with jess lockwood <laughs> it just everything gets off to some place you don't think on this show but yeah. i mean the amount of people who listen to it i think they're really gonna hear what you guys are saying and and be interested in what you're doing i mean that's that's the one thing about this show is i mean there's a big following and then it's not telling who you just inspired with all that i mean they're just didn't like you know that was yeah. It's just a lot that you guys do, and it's it's pretty impressive when people are able to. I hope they don't write letters back. We got into foster, and y'all are to blame. And <laughs> oh, well, so, some we PETA you. person's <laughs> going to send you a message about the damn turtle. I'll tell you I'm that. Just you. That's more likely. It's so true. I didn't know that was going to be on the show. I didn't know we already started the show. Well, see, if I tell you we started, then I don't get the weird stuff out of the way. Yeah, yeah just go ahead and do it. I saw it. I was well, like, I can get yeah, back yeah. into some weird stuff. Yeah. Come on wins. now. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. It's just you guys are real impressive people, and uh, I was real excited to meet you guys because I mean I've we've been following each other on social media for a while. I'm like, right. God, I really want to know what this lady is about. <laughs> My friend Haley talks to her. They do stuff. I'm like, man, she just seems cool, and I could peek you on there every once in a while. Didn't seem as cool, but you are. Everybody oh, yeah. should have a Haley in their life. I'm just saying because she's mentally, you know, and, and we've walked through some stuff together, but. Yeah. You know, sometimes you think you're you're getting involved in someone's life to help them, and then they end up helping you along the way, and then you become friends, and you just kind of. She's a unique person. That's yeah, for she sure. is very unique, and uh, just one of those tough people. You're like, okay, drop the bullshit. It's not. It's all. No, right. it's not. It's not yeah, bullshit. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's all right. the way. She's there. Because yeah. you're around people enough, and you just sometimes that bullshit wall comes down. It's not bullshit. It's real. So yeah. She deserves everybody's respect for yeah. more than the gold buckles. That's, that's right. for sure. Yeah. So. She's pretty cool. I, I didn't know her before. <laughs> when you get J.W. Hart watching the NFR on, you know, it's so cool to see him, like, getting a little, you know, getting a little loud at the TV. I keep trying to buy her horse and she's selling <laughs> sell her. <laughs> I'm like, how about that yellow horse you got? I don't know. Hey, I mean, I give her a hard time. for the value of that horse, you could take every – kid out of foster across yeah. the country for how much that horse is worth <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, that would that and would uh, sure fix the deficit the, in this country she <laughs> she's turned down every offer i mean i got to about 2751 it's <laughs> so funny yeah maybe three thousand but you got seven zeros behind that 27 <laughs> yeah, exactly well, I mean, that's what that horse is worth <laughs> but i don't know you guys are you guys are great and i hope you go get some babes chicken or whatever it is you're gonna do and the rest of it, that's marriage stuff. But Yeah, all the yeah. things. Yep. Date night. Woohoo. Yeah, you guys probably really need it with all that stuff you got going on. But thank we you guys for yeah. coming on. I appreciate yeah. it. It was, we, was a lot of fun and really interesting insight in your guys' life. And I'm um, thank you for being so open. Glad I think it was really awesome. Glad you in on it. Yeah. <laughs> glad I could I, do I it. I drove her down here so y'all could talk to her for an hour. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for getting me a driver. I kept on hour. waiting for him to just come on into the conversation. You Come can't on. get a word in Come beside her. Hey, she's a preacher. She she's knows what talking. to do. It's not even that. You would rather not talk about this. You're right. <laughs> He's just the supportive about, role. <laughs> we could have been talking about horses or cows or something. I guess that means you're coming back. We'll get into that later. we got to leave her at home, though. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> hey. He'll want me here for the truth. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> One thing about this is we do eight a month every month, so we need I content. <laughs> It's just the reality of it. We'll take whatever. Hey, she, I, no, she really. Thanks one. for having us. She does one too, and I get forced into hers too. So well, she's got yeah. a good one. Yours is good. She does a good job. Real well, pro. We appreciate just the offer. It was good. To, it was it was really fun to come down here. I was I really did look forward to coming really? down here. I'm yeah. glad to hear that. We listened to Derek Derek's podcast before we got here. You did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's my idol. Yeah, we really? Love, we love like, that guy. God, I love Derek. I got, we love that I, guy. I got different idols, but Derek with a lariat rope in your hand. A cowboy hat on. He's my guy. Yeah, man, I, he can do anything. I've there. been harassing him for so long to come down here. You know, I've talked to him on the phone, and he's like, "I can't do no damn podcast. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. There's no way I could talk." When he's when he's talking about how a, a kid on the res, reservation, you know, had the same opportunities and just didn't have the money or whatever. Same. I'm like, yeah, but the guy that's got magic with a lariat rope is a little more skilled than. Even the guy that's got the backing <laughs> can do more with his yeah. talent. And just no damn quit do. either. I mean, his he got he opened up so much on that show and just yeah. getting to hear about, like, I had $47 and I bought the steaks and never told anybody <laughs> had the rest. So I was like, great. I, it was. And yeah. I'd had conversations with him last year, like an hour, hour-long hour phone conversation kind of thing. And he's like, I can't do a podcast. I was like, Derek, you, we just literally just do what you just did. And he's like, yeah. no, every star has to align random. <laughs> All right, I guess you're here for the semifinals. Time to call in that. Yeah. And he was like, no, not doing it. I was like, homie, you promised. And he's like, okay, I'm going to do it. Like, All right, fine. <laughs> yeah. And he brought uh, Erich and Peyton here. They were sleeping on the couch, and then we couldn't get them to stop talking. So it was, yeah. it was not a problem. It's like one of the biggest episodes we had. Yeah. Uh, that was good. I, we I'm enjoyed it. It was really good. Yeah. Fan, yeah. Me too. I was like, let's listen to that on the way here. So we did. Yeah, it's such a great insight into his kind of journey. Yeah. 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 And he's not just talented at roping. You ever seen stuff he builds? Like he does all kinds of stuff. Like the trailers he's yeah. built? He does stuff. all kinds of stuff. Bucking out buffaloes. Oh, yeah, yeah, the whole deal. rider, too. Yeah. I had no idea, yeah. Right. <laughs> he lives it. He does. Yeah. And so do you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. Right, you guys have a great date night. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, brother, let's
This has been The Gage, hosted by me, Chance Conrado, produced and edited by our guy Ty Yeager. Shout out to the executive producers, Dustin Pointer and Cody Denton. Marketing and content produced by Riley Chone. Our theme song is by Shay Ashire and the Night Howlers. Make sure to rate and review this podcast as well as follow The Gage on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And make sure to subscribe to The Gage wherever you get your podcast. We'll see you guys next time.